Greetings, church, and ma'i net na pagbati to you all. That's my Filipino language and my welcome to you. Komastas to all of you. And I just want to say that we miss you down here in Aotearoa in New Zealand. You know, you've part, been part of our journey for many years. And I know that this year we are celebrating seven years of um, the launch of Equippers in Manila. And so I just want to do a big shout out to Pastor John and Niles, a big shout out to Pastor Ace and Jesus. Gigi, we love you. We really miss you guys. It's been a couple of years since we haven't seen you, but we're really praying for you and believing that maybe next year in 2022, we will see you again. Thank you all for those who today are streaming in, who, who are online, whatever platform that you're you're watching our church service today. Thanks so much for coming in. Salama poor. It's awesome that you're with us. And so maybe you're new today. And if that's you, this is the first time that you've tuned into our church service today, then we want to hear from you. So we'd love if you could just put a comment down in the chat box and just let us know uh, that you're new. Uh, just put the word I'm new and uh, we'd love to, to follow up with you and connect with you because that's the type of church that we are. But I'm excited to be bringing the message to you today. And um, also that, um, uh, you know, it's a real privilege to be part of of um, your journey, but not only that, but also to be part of your seven-year celebration. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Barrett, and um, for the last 10 years, I've been coming to Manila. For, for six of those 10 years, we have brought a team up every year, and so we've had mission, missions team. So even right now, at this very moment of the, of the calendar year, we we would be preparing our team, we would be organising projects and, and, and outreaches that we would do when we land in Manila. But of course, because of the global lockdown, unfortunately, we aren't able to be there with you, but we do miss bringing our missions team over to Manila. And we've done some incredible things over the time that we've been back and forwards each year with our teams. And, and I remember that in 2013, it all started with our first missions trip and 2013 when when we came over we brought 33 people all, all came over from New Zealand and and landed in Manila and uh, we spent 10 days just doing outreaches and also building a school but I'll I'll talk about that a little later but right now I want to launch in to our message I've been given an assignment by Pastor John and so I really want to stay true to our assignment and so we're now currently in a series and that series is called Seven Times and uh, it's off the uh, it's off the story from the book of Joshua 6 and so you know can I encourage you over the next 4 weeks um, just to continue to share the messages, invite people along to our services, because I think that this is, I believe that this is a real significant time for us to reach out and invite people into our into our services. And so don't forget to share the, hit the share button. Don't forget to invite your friends, get them to tune in, because I don't want you to miss anything uh, around with this uh, series that we're doing of seven times. And so I'm going to, kick straight into it. And so if you've got your Bibles or your devices, what I want you to do now is I want you to open up to Joshua chapter 6. That's Joshua chapter 6. And I'm going to read right from the start from verse 1. And here's what it says. It says, Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its kings and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Verse 4, it says, Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout, then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. For the next few minutes, I want to share a message that I have titled, Lessons in the Lapse. Lessons in the Lapse. 
that there are some principles in this story of Jericho that are both practical but powerful for us all to learn. You know, one of the things that I've come to adopt in my own life is, is, um, since I've been walking with the Lord is, is the importance of keeping my heart teachable, that there's always lessons that we can learn from each other, that lessons that we can learn from the, the Word of God. And today I, I, I want to give you some practical lessons that we can glean from the story of Jericho uh, this, today. So this was a, Jericho was a heavily fortified city. It, its walls were believed to be 25 feet high and at least 20 feet wide. That is a significant wall. They say that, some scholars say that they were able to race chariots around the walls of Jericho. I'm not quite sure if that's true or not, but that's some of the information as I've done my research on here that I thought I would share with you. On the top of these thick walls would stand soldiers. Now, many of you know that I'm, I'm an ex-military guy. I spent 20 years in the New Zealand Army. So this the story of Joshua really resonates in my spirit. And so what it says is that they, they would have soldiers that could see for miles right around the city of Jericho. But here we say, we see that in Joshua 1, in the Amplified Version, this is what it says. Now the Jericho, a fortified city with high walls, was tightly closed because of the people's fear of the sons of Israel. No one went out or came in. Jericho was a city on lockdown. So tightly was Jericho closed that nothing and no one was permitted to go out or come in. This was a city that couldn't give out either. It couldn't give out, but also it couldn't receive. And I think that there's a spiritual principle here that we can learn when it comes to our own life is that we can actually have times in our life when we're like the city of Jericho, where we're unable to give out or give or to receive. And this morning my prayer is, is that right now I just want us to take a moment, just to pause for a moment, and I just want to pray. Father, I thank you this morning for our lives. I thank you for you and what you're doing in our lives. I thank you, Lord, that though we're on lockdown, Lord, we can still have a heart that can receive from this message this morning. May we not be like Jericho, closed off, Lord, where nothing comes into our life or goes out of it. But Father, today, may we be open. May our hearts and our minds be open to receive all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. So now I just want to move on and I, I just want to share some of the lessons and principles that I've adopted in my own life that I can glean from this story. And so the first lesson that I want to share is the lesson of perspective, the lesson of of perspective. Joshua 6.2, and it says, The Lord said to Joshua, See, see, I have given you Jericho. See, I have given the kings of Jericho. See, I have given the mighty men of valor to you in Jericho. There was a, a command that, uh, and a word that God gave to Joshua. And the first thing that he gave through his word was for Joshua to see. The problem that he knew that the Israelites would have would be the walls, that they would see this heavily fortified city and that, that they would be staring at this wall, how big it was, and that it was circumference right around the whole city. And this could be a problem, but you see, that's what how the enemy works in our life, is that he wants to get our attention on the walls, on the problems in our life. Rather, God is saying to us through this first lesson is that we need to have a fresh perspective on what's happening around in our life. That, you know, he, he wanted Joshua to shift the attention not onto the wall, but beyond the wall, beyond what's beyond the city of Jericho. Because the truth is the city of Jericho had big walls, but it was only a small city. 
It had big walls and only a small city. You see, if our eyes are always, if our perspective is always on the big problem in front of us, we'll actually miss the fact that it's only a small problem, that it's, it's nothing for God. And so today God is saying for us is the first lesson is the lesson of perspective. What's the perspective that God is, is saying to you that you need to look through uh, uh, um, today uh, and, and on, in your life? that's beyond what the situation that we all face. You know, like us here in New Zealand, we're on lockdown at the moment. Um, not that we haven't been in lockdown as long as you guys have been, but we're, we're into about our eighth week now where, where we're still at home, working from home. We've got essential workers around the place, but, you know, we've been stirred up to, to refresh our perspective is what are the opportunities that we're missing? Pastor Sam has been preaching on a message around creativity what, and encouraging us to be creative in what we're doing is that to, to look for answers in hidden places. And, and I love that uh, I love that, that short thinking, that short thought that he's given us. And it, it's pushed me to think and to change and refresh my perspective. So church, can I encourage you today? The first lesson is to is the lesson of perspective. God doesn't want us to, to be stuck and staring at our problems because really our problems are only small, but the enemy wants it to be look like to for it to look like a fortified city, yet it's only a small place. And so the the the, um, the story of Jericho is, is is exactly about that. You know, something that I'd like to share with you is that on on our first trip, our first missions trip when we came to Manila is that we had a project and that project was up in the mountains and we were going to build a school for the children in a village. And this village was about four to 500 people that were living in this village. And so we, in advance, we, we sent money to, to, to um, prepare the foundation of the school to be able to pay for trucks to bring concrete in and to pour that concrete in and, and for the locals to prepare the, the, the structure and the foundation of the school. But when we arrived, um, we, went, we drove up to the village. It took us a while to get up there, a couple of hours to drive into there and um, only to discover that when we hopped out of the van, all we saw was a hole in the ground. There was no concrete. There was no foundation. And, you know, I, I had um, a, a builder, one of our elders here in Auckland, Dave McGillivray. He's got his own building construction company. And when, when he looked at this hole in the ground, he said to me, there's no way that we're going to be able to complete this build in six days. We, there's, there's no way that we'll be able to fulfill the promise that we had made to this village. And I, and I just felt in my, spe in my spirit that, that we needed to change our perspective, is that we, we, we needed to refresh and rethink our plan. And so before you knew it, we, 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 had, we changed it. We, um, we actually hired some local guys. A truck came past. We, we, we hired the truck and we went down to the river. We filled it up with rocks and, and, and we built the school and, and, and we completed that task. Um, but it needed us to rethink and to change our vision, to, to, to think about the, 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 the goal that we had set before us. And, and so this lesson of changing our perspective, the lesson of perspective is critical. So that's our first one. The second lesson is the lesson of pattern. The lesson of pattern. Here's what Joshua 6 verses 12 to 14 says. It says, Joshua got up in early in the mo next morning and the priests again carried the ark of the Lord. The seven priests with the ram's horns marched in front of the ark of the Lord, blowing the horns again. The armed men marched both in front of the priests and with the horns and behind the ark of the Lord. All this time, the priests were blowing their horns. On the second day, they again marched around the town once and returned to the camp. They followed this pattern for six days. There was a pattern that they needed to follow. You know, this was to Israel for Israel. This, this was all about not, not just them marching around, but it also was them having faith and obedience to God's word. 
You see, every, everything the people of Israel did on day one, they needed to do for the next six days. Every morning they would arise early. Every morning they would prepare for battle. Every morning they would leave their families and their tents. Every morning they would take their position that was allocated to them. They did this for six days. They followed a pattern of a spiritual battle plan. This was an unusual strategy, but yet it was unusual for, for, for the people, but yet they obeyed every step of the way. Every pattern that Joshua gave them, they obeyed it. There was no plan B. Just imagine if, if on the sixth day, they decided not to get up early. Just imagine if people didn't show up, if the priests with the horns didn't show up. And so the, the pattern, um, uh, the lesson of pattern is really important because it requires us to show up. And as, as people of God, I think that's a really important pattern in our life is that God doesn't want us just to, just to believe and, and talk about that we're, that we're Christians, but He wants us to show the evidence of it and, and to show up. Show up when we have services. Show up when we have gatherings. Show up when we, when we have prayer meetings. You know, it's important online, you know, even though you're, you're streaming in today and you're watching this uh, in your bedroom or in your lounge, the importance, and I'm grateful and thankful that you showed up because you're building patterns in your life. What patterns is God saying for you to do. I'm thankful that I've had leaders in my life who have given me patterns. You know, every morning I show up. Every morning I get up and I spend my quiet time with God. Every time, every opportunity that there's prayer happening in the church, I show up. It's a pattern that I have. I'm committed to, to the life of the church. I'm committed to God. I'm committed to the call that God has, has on my life. And church, I want to encourage you today. What are the patterns that you need to build in your life today? What are the patterns that you've seen others doing that maybe God's saying, come on, be part of what I'm doing. Be part of my vision that I have for Manila. You know, there's a city that we want to take. There's people that, that um, are advancing and, and maturing in your journey. And all you need to do is just show up and build patterns in your life. So there's lessons on perspective. There's lessons on patterns. The third lesson is the lesson of progress. The lesson of progress. Joshua 16, here's what it says. Do not shout, do not even talk, Joshua commanded, not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout. Then shout. So for six days, they had been following a pattern of getting up early in the morning, of forming up, of marching around the city. And it would, you know, scholars believe that it would only take them, this, so small was the city, it would only take them just over an hour to walk around the city. So they would walk around the city and then they would return back to their tent. Just every day, getting up, walking around, marching around the city, the, the trumpets would be blowing, the men would be marching, yet they were not to say a single word. And, and I love this fact that, and, and this point, that the lesson of progress is that we may feel that we're just marching around the city and yet nothing's happening. And so day one, you know, you can, you can see that, well, okay, that was the first day, but by day six, surely you'd get tired of marching around and wondering what is the strategy all about? This marching strategy, why are we walking around the city? Nothing's happening. We you know we're, we're told not to shout. We're blowing the horns and all we're doing is going back to our, 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 our tents and, and we, we, we can, you know, then start to complain. Yet I've learned that sometimes God needs us, like our cell phones, to put our mouth on mute. That's right, to put our mouth on mute. That to, to learn the lesson that progress is happening even when it doesn't feel like it. You know, we, 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 um, we get caught up 
and, and the, the, the patterns that we've got that when we don't see anything happening, we start to wonder, is this really working? What's the strategy all about? And why do I need to keep praying? You know, one of the things, patterns in my life is prayer. And I've been praying for my family. I'm, I'm the first one in my family and my whanau to be, to, to be saved, to give their heart to the Lord. And, and ever since I've given my heart to the Lord on the 15th of October in the year 2000, um, I have started to pray for my family. Every day I'm praying for my family. I'm claiming that they would, that, that they would hear the word of God and, or they would hear about Jesus through, through an anointed saint and they would give their life. Every day I just pray, God, I, I want to see my family saved. I want to break cycles. I want to, I, I want to see, Lord, um, my my, my my cousins and 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 their children and their children's children you know stop the the cycles of addiction and 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 break these cycles that that I see that are happening in my my family and yet this year 21 years later on the 26th of May I got the privilege of leading my mum to the Lord and you know I'm going to be honest with you sometimes I gave up Sometimes I, I, I just like, I don't know whether this prayer is even, I don't even know whether my family are going to get saved. And, 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 and sometimes I didn't pray for them. But yet God re reminded me uh, on the 26th of May, He spoke to me during my devotions when I was at, uh, in, in my home of Taranaki and, and uh, He spoke to me in my quiet time. And He said, Barrett, today your mum's going to give her life. So I went up. And I sat down with my mum and I, and, and I shared the gospel to her. She had heard me. I had shared it to her multiple times. But this day was a day that God was going to, to restore our relationship, my relationship with my mum. But also he was going to rescue her. And, and so I sat there and I led her in the prayer of salvation. And maybe you're tuning in today. Maybe you've been praying for somebody in your world, maybe for your work for your work um, colleagues, maybe for your school, maybe for your high school, your university, whoever it may be, may you learn the lesson of progress. Just because we can't see anything happening, just because we can't, it feels like uh, nothing's going on, that God's not at work, I want to say that that's exactly what the enemy wants you to hear. And if we just mute our mouths for, for a moment, we can, we can get this download from God. You know, when I sit in the presence of God, I just, I don't say anything. I just tune in. I just listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to me. And I just thank God for it. So we've got the lesson of perspective. We've got the lesson of patterns. We've got the lesson of progress. And, the, and um, before I move on to the last point, I want to say this. In the lesson of progress, it's going to take faith that they were to march around the city for six days and then return home, back to their tent. But I'm encouraged that in 2 Corinthians, we are given a word of encouragement in chapter 5, verse 7. It says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Here's a word that I just feel prophetically right now, as God is saying to you and to us all, is that we've got to keep marching. We've just got to keep walking and understand and believe and have the faith that God's working. While we're walking, God is working. Number, number, lesson number four, here it is, the lesson of persistence. Joshua 6, 15, here's what it says. But it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and marched around the city, not once this time, but seven times in the same manner that they had done, in the same pattern. And on that day, only they marched around the city seven times. So this was, there was a change of plan here that no longer are we walking just the once and returning back to our tents. On this day, Joshua gave them a command that this day they're going to walk around the city seven times. And when I read this, I see why these patterns were important of rising in the morning, 
We see they would never be able to fill, fulfill the challenge of going around this city seven times in one day had they not had the pattern of getting up early in the morning. You know, it's, it's a great pattern. And here, there's always a purpose behind the pattern. And that purpose behind the pattern is also about being persistent in what we do. You know, nothing appeared to be happening. It was now time to do seven laps. And, and the persistence, uh, being persistent is about never giving up. Persistence is staying at it, is, is keep going, is not quitting, is, is just having the belief and the faith. Man, God, you're on my side. And if I have to do more, and sometimes God asks for more, is that we've got this, built this pattern that, oh, this is how in the mornings I wake up, I do my devotion, I go to work, but God always interrupts our day. And in the interruption, we've got to know and understand and get the sense of what God is wanting to do in that moment. And sometimes it's about us just being persistent. Maybe today there's somebody that you could think of, you know, right now, who's the person that you've been praying for? Who's the person that you've invited many times over but they've never shown up. Maybe today God's saying, be persistent. Send them a message. Send them a text. Maybe even right now, share this message with them. You know, share about what, what God's been saying to you and speaking to you today during our service online. But whatever it is, church, can I encourage you is to learn the lesson of persistence. Never quitting. Never quitting. And so we've had the lesson of perspective Lesson of presence, uh, of patterns, lesson of progress, lessons of persistence. And the last one is the lesson of praise. The lesson of praise. You know, every time that I've come over to Manila, uh, one thing that I've really loved about hanging out with your pastors is that, man, we have some fun. They are such great people to be around. You've got great leaders. And I always love the joy that uh, I receive every time that I come to Manila. And when we're going, you know, because of traffic, you know, there's, there's nothing like it in the world except for traffic in Manila. You know, it can take like what a normal trip here in New Zealand is 20 minutes from, from here out to Monaco where I live. It would take three hours. And so we're stuck in vehicles. And while we're in vehicles, man, Pastor Ace or Pastor John have got their radios and, 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 and stereos on and we're pumping praise. We're, we're, we're singing out loud. We're, we're enjoying ourselves. We're praying. We're taking every opportunity. And yet here's Joshua has gives this instruction when Israel heard the long blast on the horns that they were to give a shout of praise. We have really missed having our internationals, having the teams that come down from, from the Philippines down to New Zealand for, for our shout conference. It's a time when we get the whole Equippers family and churches all gather in one place in Auckland here at the Spark Arena and, and we just praise God. We lift up a shout of praise. You know, it's one thing that we do it in a car by ourselves, but it's just totally different when you've got music music playing when you when when you're stirred up and you've got all these all the people of God are all in this big arena thousands of us and we lift up a shout of praise and I've installed in my own life this lesson of praise even when I was driving in here today to be able to to come into your service and to stream into your service all the way in I'm praising God you know let praise erupt in your spirit. Maybe praise has been a little settled. Maybe it's been a little quiet in your life. But can I encourage you, get some good music. There's some great sounds that are coming out from the Equippers uh, Revolution Band. You know, the, the Equippers uh, Worship, the, uh, they're releasing new songs all the time now. And they're, they're unbelievable. They're a steeg. They're awesome. And I want to encourage you, yeah, jump on and, and download them on Spotify. Get a good playlist of praise. You know, everybody, every Christian needs to have a, pray, uh, a praise list, 
uh, a praise playlist so that you can put it on when, when, when you know, whatever you're doing at work or just put some headphones on and, and go for it. You know, people look at me really strangely sometimes when I'm sitting in traffic and I'm just praising God. So Joshua 6, 20, here's what it says. It says, when the people heard the sound of the ram's horn, they shouted as loud as they could. You know, get into a space and shout as loud as you could. You know, I love these lessons, the, the lessons of perspective to be able to, you know, see beyond our problems, the lesson of, of patterns, building patterns in our life, the lessons of progress and the lesson of, of, of praise. You know, I want to finish off with this, with, with how this all concluded. You know, um, the Bible tells us that the only survivors when the walls came down, the only survivors was a prostitute named Rahab and her family. Yeah, you, you heard me right. A prostitute named Rahab and her family. No one else remained. No other man, no other woman, no other child, no, no un other animal. They were all destroyed except this woman who lived in the wall named Rahab. And yes, she was a prostitute. And that's unbelievable when you think of all the people that would have been in this city, that the only one rescued was Rahab and her family. To me, Rahab represents hope that no matter where we are in life or how far we are away from God, Rahab represents hope, that we can have hope in God, that Jesus died for us on a cross and yet He can save us no matter how far we are away, no matter what's happening in our life, that like Rahab, we can be so distant from God, yet in one moment, God can rescue us. To me also, Rahab represents God's grace, that God would only rescue us if we had our life perfect, if we had our life all sorted, if we had our life all together. Yet God's grace says, just come as you are, come as you are, come to me. You know, and, and here we have is this Rahab who is a prostitute, that God chooses her because of her faithfulness to two spies where she hid in her house. She believed in the people of Israel. She believed in the God of Israel and she was rewarded and rescued when Israel invaded the city of Jericho. You see, to me also, Rahab represents God's love. I remember on that day that, that oh, the 15th of October in the year 2000, when I walked into a school and church was happening in a, in a school hall. And I walked into that school hall and, and I just started weeping and, and God started moving in my life. And all I wanted to do was just to get out of there. All I wanted to do was just clock out. All I wanted to do was just leave. And yet on my way to the door, a man named Gary Collins, he was the pastor of the church, stepped in front of me and he gave me this big hug and it was an awkward moment. For me, it was a, such an awkward moment. Yet when he said those words, God loves you, it just broke me. It broke into my spirit. It broke into my heart. It, it took the stubborn heart that I had been carrying for so long, the sinful life. Yes, I was, you know, I was a sinner. I realised that, man, I'm a sinner, that I've done so many things wrong, yet God would still love me. It blew me away. It rescued me. It was like God put the paddles and resuscitated my life. And, and today, you know, I get the privilege of standing before you. You know, a person that still is working through, I'm not perfect, but I'm working at it because I believe that there's always lessons that I need to learn. I, I remain teachable. Church, maybe today you're tuned in. Friends, maybe you're tuning in today and you've never realised that Jesus died for you on a cross, that He, he died so he could, he could be a ransom for your life, that God sent His Son to, to come in and die for us, for our sins on a cross. And very shortly, I'm just going to say a prayer. And maybe today you've never said this prayer. It's a prayer where you invite Jesus into our life. It's a, it's a 
prayer that we acknowledge our need for Christ, where we can do a 180 degree turn, that we can turn away from our old life and start a new life. And so friends, right where you are, maybe you're in your bedroom listening in, maybe you're in your lounge, maybe you're in your house, wherever you may be, I'd like us all just to take a moment right now and just to bow our head and close our eyes. And if that's you today, if you've never said this prayer, if you've never invited Jesus into your life, that I want you to repeat these words after me. I want you to say this prayer along with me. And, and uh, you know, maybe today, you know, there's a whole household of you. Maybe you could be like Rahab. Maybe you've got your children and your sons and your daughters, your husband or your wife. Maybe you're in all listening on TV in your lounge. If we all said it as a family, Rahab and her whole family were saved, they were rescued. The spies went in and they brought them out of a, a city that was destroyed. And maybe today, can we believe that families right around the Philippines, families right around Manila, families that you're connected to, that you've invited in, will give their life to God. So if that's you this morning, follow me in this prayer. Just say these words out loud wherever you may be. Are you ready? Here we go, church. Here we go, friends. Let's say it. Dear Lord Jesus, today I thank You that You died on the cross for my sins. And today I open my heart and I invite You into my life as my Lord and as my Saviour. Thank You for coming in and rescuing me. Thank You, God, that You wiped the slate clean. Thank You, God, that You give me a fresh start, a new start. Thank You, Lord, that today I'm going to live for You. I thank You that You've got a plan for my life and thank You that You love me unconditionally. And I pray this in faith and I believe what Your Word says in Jesus' mighty Name. Everyone say, Amen and Amen. Amen, church. It's so great being with you today. I'm going to hand you back. I hope to see you soon. I hope the borders open up. It's great, you know, being able to talk online, but we want to see you face to face. So we hope to see you next year or soon. God bless you and have a great afternoon. God bless.